Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week and these are prepared by the assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hello and welcome to this workshop. My name is Keenan and today we will dive into optical character recognition with Python. We will be using the OpenCV and PyTesseract libraries. In this workshop, I will teach you how to detect text from images and a live video feed. In addition to that, I will also show you how to convert that detected text into speech using Google's text-to-speech libraries. Before we dive into this workshop, let me tell you about the assembly. The assembly is a smart lab based out in N5 since December 2014. We have conducted over 300 workshops since then. These workshops are divided into three categories. Hack, which is embedded systems, IoT and hardware. Code, which is software projects, which, is, which relates to APIs, frameworks and applications. Finally, we have data science, which is related to advanced topics such as AI and machine learning. Our target audience for these workshops are students, professionals and entrepreneurs, but most importantly, anyone who is eager to learn about technology. We focus on smart technology and practical applications. You can keep in touch with us through our form at members.theassembly.ae. We are also active on social media. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Now, let me give you an overview of today's workshop. This workshop is going to be divided into four steps. The first is going to be capturing the feed. This can be either images or videos, and we use OpenCV for that. Then what we do is convert the image or frames of the video to data or information using Tesseract and PyTesseract. Finally, we use this information to output the visual feedback and of the detected items using all three libraries, which is Tesseract, PyTesseract, and OpenCV. And then we can convert the text which is detected into speech using GTTS or Google Text to Speech. Now, what is OpenCV? OpenCV is a cross-platform library highly optimized for real-time computer vision development and application. It focuses on image processing, video capture, and analysis, such as face detection and object recognition. Now, what is Tesseract and PyTesseract? Tesseract is a pre-trained open source tech rec text recognition engine. It supports a wide variety of spoken languages and it is compatible with many programming languages through frameworks, uh, which also contain wrappers. For this workshop, we'll be using PyTesseract, which is a Python wrapper for Tesseract. PyTesseract can also be used as a standalone invocation script, as it is supported by the Pillow and Leptonica imaging libraries. It also, this also includes JPEG, PNG, and the rest of the other formats. Now we move on to Google Text-to-Speech. This is a library and CLI tool to interface with, Google's transla with Google Translate's Text-to-Speech API. Let's get started with the coding. I've already created a PyCharm project, uh, but before we start with any of the coding elements, we need to first make a Python file and install all the required packages. We do that by right-clicking the project file a folder and then clicking Python file and then naming it. So for this project, for this workshop, we'll name it Python OCR. Now we need to install the packages so that OpenCV, Tesseract, uh, Google Text to Speech, and everything else can work properly. We do that by going to File, Setting, Project, Python Interpreter, and here we can install all the required packages. Now we need to install OpenCV, so we do that by saying OpenCV-Python, and we install this. Then we're going to install PyTesseract. PyTesseract. 
then we're also going to have to install the Google text to speech and finally we're going to install play sound play sound will come in at the, at the later stage of this workshop this will allow us to automatically play uh, files uh, from Python all right that should be all our packages installed now we can import them into Python so to import the OpenCV, Tesseract, and Google Text-to-Speech and Play Sound packages, um, you will have to type in import cv2, import pi Tesseract. Then for Google Text-to-Speech, we're going to have to do from gtts import gtts. Make sure that the tts is capitalized, otherwise it will not work. Then finally, play sound. We have to do from play sound import play sound. Now, as I mentioned before, Tesseract is a pre trained uh, library for uh, optical text recognition, uh, and PyTesseract is a wrapper. Now we need to connect PyTesseract to uh, Tesseract um, from the uh, file that we downloaded. And we do that by pi tesseract dot pi tesseract dot tesseract cmd is equal to and then you should paste the path to tesseract which I've already copied. Now what we need to do is import or connect the images to Python. We do that by saying image one is equal to cv2 dot im read and then the name of the file I've already have some uh, sample images so I'm going to just add those into the variables now once we have these images we need to display them and with OpenCV we do that by saying cv2 dot i am show the name of the window so we could name this image one along with the variable name and then we can do this for the rest you need to make sure that the window name for the other two are different otherwise it will not show properly image two and image three we'll also want to add uh, a wait time cv2 dot wait key zero which will delay it infinity then we run the file and as you can see we have the images showing up now I did make a mistake and uh, it's displaying the same image twice or three times when you change that to capture two and capture three this will now show us all the test uh, images that we will be using uh, to detect text all right now what we can do after this is we can say pi tesseract dot image to string and then we feed in the image image one and we can do the same for two and three for the time being i will comment out the window images and the wait key now we can print that enter the print command okay so i'll do that and then print and this will directly detect all the text on these images as you can see it's detecting the text and that would be the end of the workshop but that's no fun and it also does not give us any visual feedback so to improve of what we have on what we have we can get the bounding box for each of the characters and we do that by saying box one is equal to pi tesseract dot image to boxes now what this will do is each of the variables will give us x y the x and y coordinates along with the width and height of each character in the image so we say image one 
and we can do the same for the rest. All right. Now, once we have that, we can move on to actually displaying this. And we do that by saying for a, which will be a temporary variable in box one dot split lines. And then what we can do is a is equal to a dot split. Now, as I mentioned, um, pi, uh, pi test right dot image to boxes will give us a string with multiple values in it. And a equal to a dot split will convert this one string of values into a list of different values. And it will allow us to access them as an array. Now, if we print out a, you will see that it prints out a bunch of values. The first value is the actual text that is being detected. The next is the x coordinate, then y coordinate along with the width and height. We don't require the last variable, so we will not touch that. Now, we need to store these variables or these values into variables. And we can do that with this x comma y. We can store x and y in, in the same line uh, just for efficiency sake. So we can do int of a and we give the index of 1. And then for the y value, we have to give it the index of 2. And remember, we have to turn these into int because they are originally strings. Then we can save the width and height in the same way. All right. Now that we have the um, details of each of the bounding boxes for each of the characters, we need to display them. The way that we do this is with cv2 dot rectangle. Then we feed in the image we want to be displayed along with the x comma y values along with the width and height. Now that we have that, we have to give the color of our bounding box and we do that with RGB. So now we want to make it red. So we'll have 255 as the first value of RGB. Then what we need to, give, to do is we need to give the thickness of the line. So for the sake of it right now, we'll say one. Now, if you want to see these bounding boxes, we can say CV2 dot I am show the name of the window. So image one capture or just image one and then we feed the image. And uh, don't forget to have the wait key. Otherwise, you will not be able to see the window. Now let's run it. And as you can see that the bounding boxes are showing. But that is an issue. The bounding boxes are not showing correctly. The height is a bit off centered. And the way we fix that is by doing by doing this. So now, since we already have the width and height, we need to get it relative to the window. And we, we do that by taking the image and extracting that information. So we have h1 image, comma, width on image, along with underscore equal to image one dot shape. All right, so similar to how image dot uh, image to boxes has an array, uh, dot shape will also give us three values, the height and width of the image relate relative to the window and along with, an, uh, with uh, another value, which we don't need. So that's why we save it in a variable called underscore. Now, we want to do that for the rest of the images. Uh, make sure you change the variable names of them. Otherwise, you will not get the correct values. Now, once you have that, we need to minus the, um, the height from the values that we have. And we do that like this, minus y. 
and we also minus the height from the height of the the text that is being detected now if we run the code we should see that the bounding boxes show correctly uh, around each of the letters now if you want to do that for all the words or all the images we need to just copy this for loop twice Just make sure all your indentation is correctly done. And then we change the box one dot spit lines into box two and then box three. And we also need to remember to change the rectangles for each of them as well. Otherwise the bounding boxes will not show correctly. Now, uh, if you want to see all the um, all the images together we can just copy the I am show two more times and change the window name and now when we run it we should have the bounding boxes for each character for all three images all right now um, as you can see the bounding boxes are all showing on the first one and the reason for that is when we put the track the rectangle we saved it for image one so we change that to image two and then image three now the bounding boxes should show correctly all right now that's working what we can do is print out the text that is being detected and we do that by saying cv2 dot put text and then as I, as you've seen before in the a variable the first index which is zero contains the letter that is being detected and we do that and we want to display that so we say a of index zero comma then what we need to do is add the x comma y then the width um, height then oh for for the text we don't need the width and height because we don't need to stretch the letters so what we have to do is delete that and enter the the type of font that we want so we do cv2 dot font hershey plain comma and then we want to give the size of the letter so we can say one along with the color so we can say 0 comma 0 comma 255 we can give it a different color along with the thickness of the word now we can copy that now before we do that we also need to add the frame or the image that we want to add that to so we just copy that down and then we have three all right now we can print that and as you can see it shows correctly now depending on how big your frame is again we have a small issue and the way to fix that is by removing the height h3 image minus y and what this will do is started at the bottom of the bounding box but we do not want it to overlap so what we will do is we will add a bit of distance between that by saying 25 plus 25 now we can copy this for the rest this becomes h2 becomes h1 now when we run it you can see that the text is showing relatively correctly all right and that is it for detecting characters now that we have detected each individual character, is it possible to detect words? Of course it is. Now, the way we do that is similar to images to boxes. What we have to do is make a variable to store it. We say pi tesseract dot image to data and we feed in the image and we do that for the other two images. Now, the format of 
image to data is slightly different so our for loop will also change based on that so for the time being i can i will comment out this for loop and we can start with a new one so the way we detect words is by saying for z which will be our counter a in enumerate and then we feed it the values and then we do uh, if check if z is not equal to zero then we do a gets a dot split all right now that is done we need to check if the value that is getting sent through the array if it has words and the way we do that is with another if function by saying if the length of a is equal to 12 then we move on with the code then we can store similar to how we did before we can store the x and y values into their respective variables it should be noted that since um, image to data has a much bigger array uh, the value the index values will change from 1 to 6 2 to 7 3 to 8 and 4 to 9 Next, what we have to do is display the rectangles. Now, apart from images to boxes, we do not need the height and width. What we can do is just simply copy the rectangle code, paste it, and then you have the X and Y values along with the width and height. And everything else can remain the same. Now, we want to display that, and we do that by doing cv2.im show the name of the window along with the image and then cv2 dot wait key and we set that to zero now let's make sure nothing else is running and we can run the code all right as you can see the bounding boxes are showing but we have another issue the bounding boxes are quite massive and we fix that by simply adding the x to the width and the y to the height like this y plus height now if we run the code again we should see that the bounding boxes will show around each word rather than each letter all right now we can just copy that for the other images we change that to data to image to and like this and we add the for loop again another time just remember you have to change the variable names otherwise it will not show or display properly and then what we can do is have three windows along with their respective images now if we run the code we can see that the bounding boxes are showing for each word for all three images perfect now we need to display the text and like we did before we can just copy the code from the previous for loop and add it but something here is going to change and that is going to be the index value and since we want only the arrays with more than 12 array lists or 12 items in that list uh, we're going to have to set this to the index of 11 which will be the 11 uh, which will be the 12th item in the list then what we do is we do not need the height so we can just keep y plus 25 we can keep the font and everything else can remain the same then what we can do is copy that for the other for loops and change the image variable name and then we can run the code and as you can see the text is showing uh, all the words that have been detected all right and that completes our 
detection of words. Now we will move on to the video feed. All right, before we get started with the live feed, we need to first set up IP webcam. Now, as soon as you download it from the Play Store or App Store, you want to open it up, go to video preferences, and set the video resolution to 680 by 680 by 640 by 480 as well as the photo resolution and you will want to drop the quality of the video down otherwise the video buffer would be much bigger now what we have to do is first start the server and take note of the IP address this we will use uh, to connect with Python now that we're done with the IP camera setup we can connect it to Python and we can do that with a function called video capture and we can save that to a variable it's equal to cv2 dot video capture and then we give in the IP address along with the port number and if you want the video feed to only be captured we have to add slash video towards after the port number all right now just like how we set up on IP camera we need to also set up the width and height for the the window screen and we can do that by saying video dot set 3 comma 640 video dot set 4 and we put this as 480 now we have our video setup done now I will comment out the other four loops so then we can start with the live video stream now since we're gonna need a continuous stream of frames we're gonna have and then we capture each frame so we're gonna have check comma frame is equal to video dot read now the reason we have two variables is check will see if there is a frame afterwards if there if we're receiving a frame and the actual frame variable will store all the information of each individual frame now what we can do is simply copy what we had done before we paste that and we say data4 gets frame instead of image now what that does is we're feeding image to data and we're taking each frame from the camera then what we can do is copy the for loop that we had done and add this to the loop and things should work properly now just you have to remember to change images to frame uh, for the right uh, things to be visually displayed and also don't forget we have to have the proper indentation otherwise Python will not work properly now what we need to do next is after we've displayed all the information along with the bounding box and the text we need to show this so what we do is inside the for loop or outside the for loop we do cv2 dot I am show you can name this video capture along with frames now since we are or frame since we are doing a while true loop there is no way to actually break out of uh, of the loop so we need to add that otherwise the program will not end uh, and we do that by saying cv2 if dot if cv2 dot wait key is more than one millisecond and we add this little piece of code which i'll explain in a second and then what we can do is video dot release release and cv2 dot destroy all windows and then we can break now zero times ff equal to ordq this basically means that if the wait key is more than one millisecond and the user hits the Q key it will close and end the program now 
what we can do is test out so I will start up IP camera on my smartphone and immediately I will run the program as you can see we are able to detect the the words which are printed through the phone it should be noted that this is quite slow because of the buffer um, there are ways to go around it but for the sake of this workshop uh, this setup works perfectly and now to close the program I have to hit Q and it will destroy all the windows all right now that we're done with the live video feed we can move on to the final part of this workshop that is converting the detected text into speech now we will just comment out our previous code and what we can do is for this text detection to speech to work perfectly we would have to save the, de the detected text into a file so what we will have to do is create a file so we right click the project new file and we can save it as string.txt alright now we have an empty file now what we can do is write and read to it so file write is equal to open string dot txt and we have to give it a write permission and we do that by saying w right after that now what we can do is copy the code that we used for um, for the word detection we can copy that and we can paste it then do that you can change that to one of the images that we have we can do image to even any of the images so we can say image to now this is going to detect words on image 2 and we need to now save that to the file and we do that by saying file write dot write and then we have a and we have the index of 11 and once all the information is written to the file after the for loop we can close the file we can say file write dot close and that writes all the information that is detected into the file now once the file has all the words that we need we need to read it and then save it to um, mp3 files so we can do that by saying file read gets open feed it the text file along with the permission of only read then we also need to set the language for our text to speech so we say language gets en then we need to say store each line inside the file into a variable so we say line gets file read dot read close the brackets and then what we need to do is also check if the line is empty so if nothing saves the line it will not print anything so line is not equal to empty then we can continue and then what we have to do is convert the text that was detected in each line into speech and we do that by having a variable called speech is equal to google text to speech and then we say our text is equal to the line along with the language and finally we want to set the speed so slow is equal to false now what we have to do is save this converted um, uh, speech into um, into an mp3 file so what we can say is speech dot save and then we have give the name of the file this is test dot mp3 and that is it so now we have saved the mp3 file but to play it automatically we need to use play sound so we use play sound and then just the name of the file that's how easy it is but before that we want to display all the text that is being detected before we hear what the audio file has so what we do is cv2.im show we say google text to speech 
along with image2 is because that's what we're using and then we do cv2 dot weight key zero so what will happen is as soon as we close the window we will hear the sound play so let's run the program and see what happens as you can see it took a bit of a second that is because it completed the entire text to speech before showing us the output now you can see that the stuff is showing now as soon as we close it we're going to hear the sound play explain that stuff oh one two three four five four seven eight nine oh all right since and now we have completed the google text to speech and that will conclude our workshop for today so that's it for today's workshop if you enjoyed consider hitting the like and subscribe button and to stay up to date with more of our content you can follow us on our social media thanks for watching